everybody and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions and today this episode is brought to us by Leonard appreciate you now I'm gonna get into this because I'm not sure why this is such a difficult thing for people to understand um, I think a couple videos back I spoke about how I spoke with several people this week and one of the most common reoccurring thing was the fact that they were attempting to exercise the rights of somebody else. Now, here's the issue with that. If you are not a guardian, if they have not given you that right, if, like there are so many aspects to it. You cannot control the well-being of another human without one their consent and then two it must be done in writing and a lot of the people that I've been coming across have been attempting to do this in some shape some form some manner to even the point that they are trying to attempt to shape the way a person thinks and even perceives or even receives information. Now today, it's one I've gone over before. I'm going to go into just a tad bit deeper, but I want you to kind of get a grasp of what it is that I'm saying. I hope that you take this with you. I hope that you understand it and apply it as it is written. A person may only assert his own legal rights and interests and cannot rest his claim of relief on the legal rights or interests of third parties. Allstate Insurance Company versus Thrifty Rent a Car Systems, blah, 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 2001. And in Roth v. Sheldon, 422 U.S. 490 1975 The plaintiff generally must assert his own legal rights and interests and cannot raise his claim of relief on the legal rights of third parties. Pretty much the exact same sentence. Pretty much the exact same decision. Two separate cases one in 1975 the other is in 2001 so 26 years later people are still doing the exact same thing and being told the exact same thing and still attempting to do the exact same thing now the one thing i have learned is if you're continuing to do the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over expecting a different result you're crazy. But I'm going to give you one more. If a plaintiff lacks standing, then the courts, all courts, are legally, constitutionally incapable of pleading because courts only adjudicate justiciable controversies. United States versus Interstate Commerce Commission. When you're understanding that, you lack standing when you're bringing somebody else's claim in the court. You are not super saver ho. That's not your job. You can only assert what's yours. Allen v. Wright, 468 U.S. 737, 1984. The requirement of standing, however, as core component derived directly from the Constitution, a plaintiff must alleged personal injury fairly traceable to the defendant's alleged unlawful conduct and likely to be redressed by the requested relief. Now, I'm going to go into this because this actually goes a little deeper into one of the things from the 12B6, but it goes directly to what we're talking about. The requirement of standing is that somebody has done something to you, whether it's to your person or to your property, and their 
actions were done through either negligence or absolute willfulness. That's why whenever I speak about all of this, I use the words of negligence. I use the words deliberate. I use the words willful. Why? Because words have power. And in these powers, it allows an established standing. Because once you have standing, it goes into they cannot have your case dismissed because your redress for relief can be found because of their actions. But it has to be done directly to you, not anybody else. Thank you guys that have been donating. Again, we're setting up to go to a bigger platform, to go somewhere where we don't have to worry about the monetization from YouTube. We don't have to worry about the copyright strikes. We don't have to worry about all these censorships. But it's going to take you guys getting there. Cash App is my favorite because it has a lot of perks. You get a stupid amount of discounts for using it. And if you use my link in the description, we both get paid while using it. Apple Pay. Send your name whenever you send a donation. And we both get happiness because it allows the channel to grow and allows it to go into something else. Venmo, same thing. Send the name that you want me to shout out. And as well, Google Wallet. I love you guys that have been using Google Wallet. Continue using Google Wallet, and I'll see you guys next time.